by Big John Hudson following the big news of the day and heartbreak for many of us in the UFO community because there was a report that came out stating, John, that NASA had recently hired 24 theologians to check out how the religious community would adjust to alien contact. But now we're finding out that that report actually happened a long time ago. Fill us in, buddy. So this this is fascinating, right? And and I, I encourage everyone to dig more into this as days progress because this one might have more legs to it than we realize because essentially what we had was what seemed to be a rather a uh, rather, you know, benign article talking about the fact that NASA had hired a bunch of theologians to come in and study, you know, the effects of of, of the population becoming aware of, of, of alien life. And, you know, on the surface, I mean, that may ruffle some feathers, but it, it actually makes complete perfect sense to cons- at least consult theologians when you're talking about introducing the people who the theologians, you know, teach that how better to handle such a thing, right? So it all seemed on the up and up, right? Some people obviously got a little, uh, uh, you know, uh, upset, but whatever. And uh, and but then we find out, and if you go to Snoop's and I, I provide a link, they do a great breakdown of what happened. That this was a this was a weird thing, and I don't I don't think it was done by a bot. It could have been done by an algorithm, but I think it was done by someone on purpose. And then you have to ask the question why? Because what someone did is they took an old article from a long time ago, and I believe it was, I mean, the original article was like. I mean, it was a number of years ago. I mean, it was like, I think it was like 2011 or something. And they basically took that article and 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 pruned it down, distilled it to a point where it could be re- re-represented and you couldn't tell what data it had come from. And then they added some to it and they spun it out and they got a bunch of pretty big names to pick it up and carry it. And it was a completely intentionally fabricated story. So then you have to ask yourself, why would someone want to fabricate that specific story? What would be their motivation be for doing that? What outcome would they expect to see from that? And how would they benefit or not benefit from that happening? Are you saying you think it's a conspiracy theory? Because you're not a conspiracy theory guy. You don't even own a piece of tinfoil. This isn't conspiracy theory. This is strategy. Right. This is just this is just on on whoever on whoever did this. And I have no idea. I have I have no idea. I mean, if if I had to think if I had to take a guess, I would say a think tank. That'd be my guess. My guess would be a think tank. My think think tank would do something. Okay, would that be a think tank for the the newspaper? I believe this came out of the Guardian at first. Out of the UK, I think, it, I think it's more likely to be a a a, a research project for for uh, for religious focused folk people. They, they they basically want they basically want to see in light of all of the very non secular um, uh, UFO information coming out if they some suddenly bombard the media with a very secular UFO based article how how will, how will everyone respond? Will they be encouraged? Will they find it discouraging? Will they find it infuriating? Like, what will they do? To me, that's a that's one hell of a litmus test. I'm just wondering who the reason for putting it out. I mean, obviously, it is clickbait, and they got millions of clicks yes. on that story, yep. which probably and, made them a lot of money. And it's it's I'll be honest, that's possible. It's possible that it stops there. There's this guy out in Colorado. That someone did this incredible expose on a couple of years ago that was doing exactly that for politics, and he was making a ton of money doing it. So, and, that, and he and he, he it was funny because he was doing it for extremely right wing uh, periodicals, and he himself was actually very left wing, and he didn't even believe anything he was doing. He was just doing it because he was making money. It was horrible. Um, so yeah, so that's possible. I think it's more likely that this was a this was a theoretical experiment that was done to test an a test hypothesis. Or, or it was done as some sort of a way of, of you know, of, of mitigating some other thing that was going on. I mean, it's very, very hard to know. But the thing is, is that the fact that we now know that it, it started out as a real article from the past means that someone had to go look for it. And then they had to grab it and they had to clean it and they had to spruce it up. And then they had to, to deliver it out into the world in a way 
that it would appear fresh. Why would you do that? An excellent, excellent, excellent question. Okay, but I have two ways of thinking here, John. Hmm. Number one, great way for the Guardian to get their name out there with a UFO story as passionate as this one and create a lot of clickbait, create a lot of news, a lot of hype, and they can make a lot of money off of that. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess I guess so. This to me seems a little the little deeply like manipulative for that sort of thing, but it's right. possible. But that now comes to number two, and I thank you for putting it in my head. All right, is that there is some advertising board or government board or or you know some contractual company that that helps put this news out there and says, hey, you didn't hear this from me, but you may want to check back on this story, and this is happening right now. I mean, it could even be a university research project. I mean, honestly, it, it, there could be a lot of explanations for it. But my point, but my point is, and I think we're both coming to the same conclusion, is that someone did this intentionally. Someone did this with a motivation in mind, with an outcome in mind, and it would be a good thing for all of us to know what those three things are. Wow, wow. I don't think there will be anything that unfolds out of this, John, but. I mean, this is that's a very interesting perspective that I didn't think about. Yeah, it, it tripped me out. I got. I, that's why. I, that's why I said to you when we were talking earlier. Like th this suddenly just became a much bigger story. And the thing was, is that when originally when I found this story, when I was talking and when I was talking to you about it, it was my understanding that the story went out and the story was just was just blatantly false. Then I find this great Snoop's research where they researched the article and they found out it's not totally false. It's it was true. It was just true a really long time ago. And by the way, it was it, the project ended early because it wasn't very successful. Well, it'd be so, interesting if somebody asked Bill Nelson about it. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. The head of NASA. I mean, yep. he's Mr. UFO guy now. So let's ask yep. him about it. Let's see yep, if anybody yep, in yep. the media, you know, or anybody that oh, wouldn't that be nice? send a text yeah. to him. Or not a text, <laughs> but an email to him. That's the way we do it. Let's send an email to him. All right. Moving on here, John. As uh, you know, obviously there is a lot of a lot of uh, people singing the praises in the UFO world after the passing of Harry Reid yesterday. Yes, yes, and and you know it's it's not that um, you know I I want to necessarily belabor the point or anything. It's just that you know uh, for those that, that you know by chance may not have already heard, you know we did we did lose Senator Reid, and um, you know we we're all very sorry for his passing. We are all especially. Um, concerned and 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 uh, re, uh, express our condolences to George Knapp, who considered him a close friend. And uh, it's always harder to lose a friend than anyone else. And so, um, but um, but there's a lot of very good content going on around about it. There's a lot of very good um, uh, just stuff you can read. Not only what Harry Reid did for for this community, but all the stuff that Harry Reid did outside of this community. This man did a lot of really really good things. And uh, we did a great panel on this uh, last night, uh, which I encourage everyone to check, which I'll provide a link to. Um, Thomas Fessler also did a great um, uh, thing on it yesterday, and I'm sure a lot, a lot of other people have as well, and I encourage everyone to check that out. And, it, and uh, it's just uh, something we all have to kind of acknowledge and, and, uh, and move on. How do you think this is going to affect the governmental side of the UFO community? Because he was such a main player. Do we see someone like Daniel Inoue, from Hawaii now step up a little bit more because he was kind of in oh. the shadows of Harry Reid. Mr. Inouye, by any chance, any chance you hear this, please, I beg of you on the on behalf of the human race, please consider. Um, I would be pleased beyond, I couldn't even imagine, I, can, I can't even tell you how happy I would be to see that. I'm not expecting it. Um, it would be nice. It would. It would be really, and you know, actually, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible, um, but my guess is is that there's a there's a there's a vacancy for a while, that that, that he that he leaves a that he leaves a, that basically we don't ever see anyone fill his role again. There'll be someone else that fills a new type of role that will cover the same sort of thing that he used to do. But but they'll we'll probably never ever again see someone in a, in a role that like like uh, like like he had. Senator Reid was unique. Well, it's not going to be Daniel anyway unless he's doing it from heaven. Yeah, I was going to say, I wasn't sure he was still alive. So Yeah, yeah I, I, I questioned that. As soon as yeah. I said that, I was like, I don't think he's alive. So that's my bad, and I yeah. apologize 
for yeah. that. But, you know, let's switch it up. Is it Marco Rubio? Is it Senator Gillibrand? And can any of this new crowd then uh, look at uh, this subject, uh, John, as uh, will they have the impact that a uh, that a uh, that a uh, Harry Reid had? No, I, I don't think they can. I mean, um, well, I take that back. There are a couple senators who are currently active who, after they retire, could very easily start taking on that kind of role. Um, but um, but right, in, but we're still in a world where that person would need to be um, would need to be retired essentially. I mean, I don't see how you, I don't see how you could do that from within an active office. And let's move on because I got a little mm -hmm. bit of egg on my face after that uh, comment there. Uh, the yin and yang of advanced technology. What's going on here? So this is interesting. So this is an article, um, uh, and and I apologize. I I I, I copied a bunch of the article and then I forgot to actually put a link in the article. Um, uh, so I'll include a link uh, after the show. But basically, it's an article talking about once again these navy navy patents, right? And but looking at them from more of a what does it mean sort of a thing, right? And this is very kind of interesting analysis of it. And uh, but what was to me was very very interesting was that. It, it came at it and it showed these two very different dramatic viewpoints of what it means when we get completely new, unique technology, like the technology we are all hoping we're going to get from recovered craft, right? So this is very, very apropos for what we're talking about, right? And from one point of view, right, you have um, the opposite, the, the optimistic side, which is that according to Lockheed Martin, the estimates of their compact fusion reactor could produce a constant supply of 100 megawatts of power, enough to run an entire aircraft carrier or power 100,000 people in homes using only 25 pounds of deuterium a year. Um, uh, not even a year, I think it's for, for quite some time. And the device could stick inside a nose of an F-16. So that's that's awesome, right? That's a huge win. I mean, that's I mean, that's what they could do for like rural places. People live in the boondocks, like you, Dave. Like, like you know, you could get like consistent power and actually running hot water and stuff, right? And um, water. Oh, oh, you do. Oh, oh, nice, nice, nice. And yeah. uh, and so it's so, <laughs> but the the flip side of it is the flip side of it is is that um is that then they they talk about the fact that the compression um, fusion device can lead to a development of space time modification weapons and can make a hydrogen bomb more like a firecracker in comparison with extremely high levels of achievement with this in, uh, invention. And so it's like, boom, you have here, you have the good and you have, and here you have I mean, compact fusion. That's a good thing, right? I mean, that's sort of technology that we hope to get. We hope to uh, learn soon, but here you have from one side of a view, you have something that essentially could be a planet killer. And from another side of view, you have something that could be the end of, of, of fossil fuel dependence. Well, we're soon going to see. Will this be able to, you know, I mean, this is a type of technology, John, when you talk about this, that, you know, the public may not see for another 20 to 50 years. Yep. If, if at all. Depending on its yep. success. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But the thing is, is that, is that there's now enough movement going on between fusion that I think that's actually more likely to be a lot more, a lot sooner than that. However, the, the thing that is very kind of interesting and very kind of, um, um, uh, very kind of, um, um, I think very like it's very kind of um, pertinent to what we're talking about is here you have extremely fringe technology that is likely to be about to introduced into the U.S. U.S. and and, and world markets. And it has as much potential for good as it does for bad. And this is what we're going to find with every single piece of recovered technology we find from the others. The fedora-wearing John Hudson, thank you for another wonderful unbiased UFO report. 